Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here, back at it again with another set of D&D stories. Today, I'd like to talk about how I accidentally made a roach god. Be me, level 5 fighter Goliath in a one-shot. Be not me, the eight other people. Be hired to take the guildmaster's son on an adventure to get him experience. Yeehaw! Get told about an old request for a goblin cave. Take the boy there. Arrive and find weak old tracks into the cave, not defined enough. Enter and find two paths, left and right. We go left. Find old beat up cages with dead wolves inside. One of the party lights them on fire. Path leads further into a smaller hole, still big enough for us to enter if we crawl. Everyone leaves and goes down the other path. I stay behind. Enter the hole and find a small group of goblins hiding in this hole, while the rest of the party finds a pool of water on the other path. Talk to the goblins. One speaks common and mentions a big snake, and it takes over the cave. The rest of the party then finds a basilisk in a pool of water. My brother gets spotted, and they fight it. The paladin Misty steps atop and almost gets eaten, but doesn't. I escort goblins out of the cave. They kill the big snake and I get the goblins to the entrance. Before I reach the entrance, one of the party sees some weird smaller snake thing that was friends with the goblin. They kill it, and the goblin leader, I, I assume, goes, Your friends kill our friend? Acquaintances. Oh, wanna come with us? Sure, why not? And now the 6-6 Goliath was adopted by goblins, and I'm fine with it. Be DM for a group of reprobates in Storm King's Thunder. Asimar Sorcerer, Human Druid, John Magic, and Human Weapon Master. They've been stunlocking and comboing individual giants all game. It's now time to attack Hill Giant Citadel. Minimal visible defenses. One giant, ten orcs, and four hobgobs on Overwatch. Expect a careful and methodical plan of attack worthy of Eisenhower. Instead, a riddle and deficient hooligan saw a documentary about Dresden. <laughs> oh no. Group decides to fly their new airship to the middle of the encampment and cast fireballs. Initial strikes on point. Weapon master headshot giant with harpoon for max dam. Joan the magic sets fire to the watchtower causing a hobgoblin to suicide leap. ASMR flies from gondola for alternate angle for twinned fire orbs at main lodge. Druid casts windfall to prevent arrows and javelins from hitting the balloon. Is this all you can conjure Saruman? Dot gif. Ten orcs at ground floor throw javelins at the ASMR. Pincushion.exe with added fall damage means she's rolling death saves. Six giants throw boulders at the gondola, five hit. Immediate panic. Dash with airship to escape rocks and forget ASMR lying on the ground. You dead, kid. Still in range of giants cause <laughs> math is hard. Four more boulders hit and they realize the ASMR is MIA. She must be saved. Decide to make dash to ground so hasted weapon master and horse can rescue her. John Magic at the helm has a help action inspiration plus two dex needs DC 15. Rolls a two <laughs> and a two. Kamikaze directly into down the ASMR. TPK plus 10 orcs and the five cultists helping to fly. Hope you had a lot of oil barrels on that because now the entire place is going to be going up in flames. Be me, level 8 cleric. Be not me, DM and level 7 bard. We fight a very powerful demon creature, not sure what the name was, but it has multiple insect-like legs and its crits deal three times the damage. Ah, oh, damn. Literally, first round, demon comes up to me. Crits, 74 points of piercing damage. Ha, <laughs> my face went... I only have 65 HP! Have a very protective deity. DM lets me do divine intervention as a reaction. I say I want to do it. The party all thinks, Ah, okay, he's gonna ask for protection again. The bard player shit talks me for being a baby and not taking damage. Remember the trend. Uh, oh, most divine Selene. Can you double it and give it to the next person? Make the roll and succeed? <laughs> DM not showing any emotion whatsoever. A divine light appears, protecting you from harm and rapidly flying into the bard. You take 148 points of radiant damage. 
The bard instantly dies. Everyone starts laughing. Finish the fight and revive the bard. Thank you, Celine. And everyone in the comments below, please draw a middle finger for that bard. Thank you. This was back in a tier 4 AL game. Mad Mage, second layer from the bottom. Yes, I'm aware that what I threatened couldn't be pulled off, but the DM didn't bother checking at the time, so I guess possible spoilers? We'll see. Be me, Daniel Blaze, Vengeful Paladin Warlock and Edgelord, clearly with that name. Am full of piss, vinegar, and slog. Also have no f**ks to give. Party in dungeon attempting to get out. Find sphere in room. We be in the loot boys, dot jpeg. Start headed for back of lair. Suddenly hear undead voice call to us. I see you. <laughs> Enter room, see Dracolich, shit my pants, two death knights, piss myself, and two rights. I hate it here. Oh shit, that gif. Yeah, you're really in for it now, bucko. DM really wanted a TPK. The party resigns themselves to new PCs, ready weapons for losing battle. The fuck? Who said anything about dying? Blaze Grand Sphere and steps boldly forward. Holds up Sphere. Do you know what this is? The Draco Lich gasps. <gasps> My flak tree. Had no idea, but good to know, Bony. Make threat with all the confidence of a CN asshole. That's right, you're going to sit this fight out. Otherwise, I'm going to go 2,000 feet straight up. Destroy this thing, come back down, and kill your undead ass! DM decides to call bluff. DM has no idea what self-serving asshole Blaze is. I'm not bluffing. What? Proceed to point out D door spell, three fifth level slots, and Cape of the Mount Bank. DM gets salty and tells me to roll intimidation. Roll 17 on the die, plus 12 to intimidate. Draco Lich sinks to the back corner like a scolded dog. Proceed to clean house on the rights and DKs. DM vows to kill the PC. Better DMs than you have tried, Chuckles. Be me, new DM who has never ran an encounter before. This can't go badly. Party of four, a Yonti, Paladin, Sorcerer, Homebrew, Merfolk, Reef Druid, that sounds really cool, Rogue, Bard, Water, Genasi, and Drake, Warden, Plasmoid, all level five. Feel I need to stretch out their search in a jungle and look to an encounter list. Find what I thought was neat. A spirit naga. Ooh. Look at the CR of eight and run to a calculator to see if it would be too bad. Hard fight? Okay, sure, makes sense. But they are decent in heals and are rather tanky. Start combat with them seeing the naga before it can do a sneak attack. Yon T player reminds me that Yon T's and nagas have beef. Oh, cool. Janassi goes first and attacks by throwing two psychic daggers. Both miss. Naga uses lightning bolt. Yon T makes the save. The rogue fails and gets hit. 25 damage at 10 health. Oh, go, 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 That MP3, oh, f. Yon T attacks it for about over 20 health. Wow, almost one third. Maybe it won't be so bad. Spirit Naga attacks with a bite and deals enough to send Yon T down too. Fudge the roll to allow him to barely survive because I am not going to let this shit be a TPK. Team finally gets it together and manages to hit it with phantasmal force to make it think it's on fire. Is drowned by the merfolk druid. It thinks the fire keeps going. It's down to a third of its health and is on fire and thinks it can't be put out. Sounds like uh, a little bit of a Martian inspiration there. I use that as an excuse to have a dimension door out before it winds up actually doing a TPK with some of the higher spells. Note to self, spellcasters with higher CRs are nightmares. I should be wary of this in the future. However, I think from a bystander perspective, you did right. You showed off a really badass character, something that could really one hit everybody, and then gave it an excuse to run away that felt logical, reasonable, and thrilling. Now the characters will think twice the next time they see a Naga. Be me, forever DM. Be not me, players. <laughs> West Marches campaign. Going into giant spider infested tree dungeon to save a dog's owner. Oh, that's cute. Basically great Deku tree from Zelda. Players start going room to room, ascending the tree and clearing it. Get to the boss. Huge spider named Titra. She is on the ceiling on webs. Sprays poison and uses her range to stab at players with her stabby legs. Cha -cha -cha. Wizard firebolts webs like a G. Starts burning. 
In the few turns she was actually up there, the players did some decent damage for being levels 2 to 3. Then, again, I really had a full table. I digress. Titra drops down, targets the rogue next to her, attacks four times. Any hit would be death for her, 11 HP. Misses everything. This is the rogue's second session ever, so she's excited she's escaped death. The bard's turn. I cast Sense Emotion on the spider. Everyone rolls their eyes, God damn it! Bard's been kinda trolling the entire campaign so far. You see the spider is angry, but also a bit aroused. You can sense she is confused about the arousal, but it will process that later. The table laughs, ha ha ha! The bard gets a bard idea. Uh, c c can I seduce the spider? Uh, explain to me how? Well, we've been in the spider nest for hours. Have I caught on to their mating habits at all? <laughs> if you can roll high enough on an intelligence check, sure. Rolls? Uh, how's a four do for you? Well, but then... Hey, DM, remember when I sang last session and you gave me that inspiration? Can I use it to re-roll? Oh, yeah, fine. Come on, come on, come on. Gets a nat 20. We all laugh. I describe how he begins to gyrate his hips and motion how a spider would when trying to mate. Titra is very distracted by this. Next person to attack her gets advantage. Bard cries out, Don't do it! Let our love blossom! Ooh. Blade wizard? Not having it. Attacks with advantage. Booming blade. Titra falls, granting the bard one last look before dying. The bard sobs in character. <laughs> the table's having a laughter fit. The rogue noob says, Were you actually going to describe him hooking up with the spider? You know it. <laughs> this game is awesome! Be me, first time DM, DMing a Fallout 5th edition one shot I made with the help of a Fallout 5th edition site I found. Players are two humans and a ghoul. The two humans have pets. One is an irradiated dog and the other is a rad roach. The girl, Millie, with the rad roach treats him as her child. His name is Roachy. Before the one shot, I sent her over a stat block for him from the 5th edition Fallout site. Their first encounter is with a group of giant ants that they have to drive off from a Brahmin farm. This challenge is tougher than I thought it'd be, but no big deal. That's the wasteland for ya. The PCs are really getting beat up. Players joking around like, Haha, he's gonna kill us on the first encounter. In the battle, the pet rad roach, Rochi, does a lot of damage. Kills the last giant ant. The group all celebrate surviving. Call Rochi a badass. I wonder why Rochi is doing so much damage, but kind of ignore it to focus on DMing. A couple of hours of play later, our brave adventurers are fighting their way into the bad guy lair, a vault which houses a gang of psychotic, paranoid raiders. I throw some low-level raider enemies at them to shoot down on the way in. They dispatch them easily. Once in the vault, they fight past a couple tougher raiders. No problem. They finally find the big bad evil guy in the overseer's office, a big blind dude who wears a metal helmet and fights with a super sledge. Here we go, .mp4. They fight him for a bit, he deals some solid damage to them. It's Millie's second turn, she shoots at him and misses. I look at the big bad's HP, he's still got a good bit of health left. Rochi's turn, and he hits. Oh boy. The fucking rad roach kills the big bad evil guy. <sighs> Do you want to describe how he kills him? We're all dying of laughter because I never looked at the stat block for this fucking rad roach, and he's like six levels above the PCs and deals a hell of a lot of damage in each attack. Rochi is now a meme among my friends. Rochi is God. Wouldn't have it any other way. Hey everybody, Brian Von VA checking in after the vid. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and of course, leave a comment down below letting us know that you, yes you listening, are a devout worshiper of Rochi. All hail Rochi. All hail Rochi!